Fresh challenges have emerged for the DMK front in certain parliamentary constituencies in Tamil Nadu. Its candidates are facing tough competition either from the ADMK front or the BJP led NDA. Which are these seats? Varakam, this is T. Suresh Kumar. Thank you for joining me in this episode of the Hindu Focus Tamil Nadu. A fortnight ago, we had examined some big fight constituencies in Tamil Nadu. These were Kanyakumari, Coimbatore, Dharmapuri, Ramnathapuram and Theni. We had also touched upon certain constituencies such as Chennai South, uh, Virudhanagar, Nilgiris, Tinnalveli and Tenkasi. The crown situation back then was different. And now we see a shift in the campaigning style of different candidates. And it appears that in certain constituencies, uh, the fight is moving from a triangular contest to more of a bipolar one. Let's look at five such seats. First, let's take a look at Chennai South. Some weeks ago, when Tamilasai Saudarajan had resigned as governor of Telangana and lieutenant governor of Puducherry to enter the fray in this constituency, many thought she was making a mistake. They thought it was politically unwise of her to give up the comforts of Raj Bhavan and try her luck in an electoral contest. Tamilasai Saudarajan, of course, is no stranger to Chennai South constituency. She has been the BJP Tamil Nadu president for five and a half years. Back then, of course, uh, the party was not that popular. Now, significantly, we find that uh, over the last couple of weeks during her campaigning, she has managed to attract voters beyond the dedicated voters of the BJP. Now, this constituency has a considerable number of Brahmin voters spread across different regions who have completely shifted allegi allegiance from the ADMK of Jalta's time to the BJP now. Beyond this, Tamilasai has been able to establish some contact with voters in areas including the slums of Chennai. People are able to see her connect with her because when she moves around, one question that is posed to her is, why did you quit as governor and come here in our midst? So she has been telling the people that now I am able to mingle freely with you. If you are able to shake hands with me, it is because there is no security ring around me and I would like to be one among you. This sort of a campaigning style has suddenly found resonance among a section of the electorate here. On the other hand, her principal rival, Tamil Chittanga Pandian Elis Sumati, who is a sitting MP contesting on behalf of the DMK, uh, is not able to move around f f freely because of a mobility issue. Tamil Chittanga Pandian had fractured one of her legs and her campaign has therefore been largely confined uh, to uh, campaign vehicles and meeting uh, voters during their morning walks in the parks of South Chennai constituency. Besides, Tamilachi Tangapandian also faces a anti-incumbency. As MP, uh, people feel that she did not do enough to reach out to them uh, when Chennai was marooned uh, during the December floods of last year. Uh, that is one area uh, where she has been trying to convey to the voters that she was very much active during that time. So now Tamilachi is increasingly banking on the alliance arithmetic. The DMK Front Alliance is very strong and she hopes that that will lead to more votes for her. The victory margin in this election is not likely to be as wide as what we saw in 2019 when it was a bipolar contest across Tamil Nadu. But now it's uh, more or less of three corner co contests in different regions. In South Chennai, we also have the ADMK's Jayavardhan. Uh, he was one of the youngest MPs the country got in 2014. Uh, so he is also quite popular, but somehow uh, in terms of optics, the contest has narrowed uh, as to one between Tamilasai Saudarajan and Tamilachi Tanka Pandian. And uh, there is still one more week to uh, go for the campaigning to end and we will know how things move from here. The next constituency we will see is Velur in North Tamil Nadu, 140 kilometers from Chennai. Now this is one constituency where the DMK General Secretary Durey Murugan's son Kadir Anand, who is a sitting MP, is trying this luck for a second time. The NDA has fielded uh, A.C. Shanmugam, one of the uh, candidates with deep pockets, uh, very resourceful, who is contesting there for a third time uh, in a row. A.C. Shanmugam, uh, in the last election, as we all saw, the Velour elections were initially deferred uh, due to charges of voter bribery. And eventually, when the elections were held, the victory margin uh, 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 of Kadir Anand was just about 8,000 plus votes compared to, uh, you know, the uh, vote margins that ran into several thousands and lakhs in certain other constituencies. This time, A.C. Shanmugam is giving a very tough fight to Kadir Anand according to ground reports. The DMK is handicapped. Apparently, uh, from what we hear, there is some internal rift in the party. 
one of the MLAs in that region, in the Velur region, who is very influential, is not working uh, to canvas votes in favor of Kadiranan. That's the uh, information that we have. And much will depend on how uh, the DMK uh, gets its act together and intensifies the campaign. There has been some amount of negative coverage for Kadir Anand also in one of his campaigns spotting women the crowd. Uh, he said that their faces looked bright and he asked them if the secret of their brightness uh, was beauty creams which he presumed that they had purchased with a thousand rupees monthly grant that the DMK government has been giving women in the last uh, seven to eight months. Now this has angered a section of the women voters there. The opposition has seized upon the opportunity of the milking it to the maximum. The opposition has got videos of angry women abusing the uh, MP because they feel righteously indignant that somebody must uh, compare their buying capacity of a beauty product uh, and link it with a thousand rupees grant that the government gives. In fact, the government calls this the right grant. AC Shanmugam, who belongs to the Modular community, has the advantage of the backing of the Patali Makalgachi in those elections. Uh, there are a considerable number of one years over whom the PMK holds uh, sway. Kadir Anand also belongs to the one year community, but uh, the caste consultation apparently is higher for the PMK there. Therefore, this is one region uh, where the contest will narrow down to a bipolar one between AC Shanmugam and Kadir Anand. Now, let us move to the western region of Tamil Nadu. E uh, this constituency is one uh, where the AIADMK is strongly banking on its candidate Atral Ashok Kumar to throw up a big surprise. Atral Ashok Kumar, who was previously with the BJP, had shifted to the ADMK only some months ago, but he's quite a popular figure in that region. He's pitted against the DMK's uh, Prakash, who's apparently uh, <coughs> chosen candidate of Udayanidhi Stalin there. Now, Atral uh, Ashok Kumar runs a foundation called Atral Foundation through which uh, he has been running rupees 10 clinics where you just pay rupees 10 to uh, consult a doctor. He has also been offering uh, full meals for people for just rupees 10. So, uh, in that sense, uh, it, uh, his philanthropic uh, outreach has uh, made him popular among the electorate. He is one of the richest candidates in Tamil Nadu now. His net asset worth is about rupees 583 crore and more. Uh, and his outreach has been good in Erode. In fact, uh, is one of the Erode also is one of, in fact one of the strongholds of the AADMK. Uh, the DMK will be banking on the strength of the MDMK, one of its allies there. The last sitting MP from this uh, region was uh, Ganesha Murthy, who unfortunately died under very tragic circumstances recently. So possibly some sympathy factor could shift to the DMK candidate. And this contest uh, will be intensely watched uh, and perhaps one constituency like I mentioned where the ADMK is on a very strong footing at the moment. Uh, unless a three-way split uh, works uh, in favor of the DMK, it looks like uh, here we can look for some surprise. From here, let us move on to the Delta region, Tirchi. Now, Tirchi constituency is where the DMK has fielded uh, MDMK General Secretary Vaigo son Durai Vaigo as an alliance candidate. Durai Vaigo uh, has been conveying, some, for, for some reason Durai Vaigo has been conveying that he was a reluctant entrant to the contest uh, and he had agreed to contest only because, uh, you know, his party workers wanted him. But uh, this attitude has also led to some sort of a rift or a lack of chemistry uh, between the MDMK and the DMK. On the other hand, the ADMK has fielded a very resourceful candidate there, Siddhan Ladan, whose brother is a uh, uh, well-known uh, uh, sand mining uh, businessman, uh, uh, quite resourceful at that. Uh, the fight is apparently increasing. The ADMK is apparently uh, indulging in a very strong, intense campaign there. The lack of chemistry between Durai Vaigo and two of the DMK strongmen there, uh, Ministers K. Nehru and Anbil Mahesh Poyamali, is apparently showing on the ground and something needs to be done drastically uh, to fix this at the ground level. One other factor is uh, that Two of the assembly segments in Tirchi constituency comes within the Pudukote region where the AADMK's former health minister C. Vijay Baska holds considerable influence. Vijay Baska in fact has offered very uh, good incentives for party men who ensure that the DMK is pushed to the uh, second place in the region. So we need to see how that incentive works there and uh, there is a very urgent need uh, like I mentioned for the DMK to fix the issue of working relationship between all the alliance leaders and the local strongmen and the candidate to ensure that uh, you know uh, they put up a very tough fight uh, with the AADMK. Now let us move towards the south, Vurdhanagar constituency. Initially it appeared that this constituency will see a triangular fight between sitting Congress MP Marikam Thakur, uh, 
the DMD case, uh, Vijay Prabhakaran who has entered the fray with the backing of the AADMK and Estrella actor and well-known uh, uh, television serial producer Radhika Sharath Kumar who is contesting on behalf of the BJP. However, uh, over the past week or so, apparently the ground situation appears that it is an increasingly uh, narrow contest uh, between Manikam Thakur and Vijay Prabhakaran. Vijay Prabhakaran is the son of Vijay Gant, the founder of DMDK. This is also the native constituency. In fact, in 2009, uh, when the DMDK contested its first parliamentary elections, uh, its candidate had polled more than 1.25 lakh votes here. And now, uh, after the death of Vijay Gant, there appears to be some sympathy factor at work in the region and that is working to the benefit of Vijay Prabhakaran. Besides, the chemistry between the AADMK and the DMDK is very strong at the ground level. Although the alliance talks are dragged on post-alliance, the chemistry between AADMK and DMDK has been fantastic. Uh, AADMK leader Edapadi Palnisami had himself campaigned uh, for Vijay Prabhakaran there and we saw some bond homie between them. And there the contest is now narrowing down to these two candidates. For the Congress candidate, much will depend on the alliance arithmetic at play there. One other factor in this election that has emerged is the way Edapadi Palnisamy has been campaigning. The ADMK leader uh, has been drawing uh, enough crowds uh, uh, for each of his public meetings over the last two weeks. In fact, uh, one of the features of his public meeting is the way he interacts with the crowd and the way they respond. So the, there, is, there appears to be some sort of a revival for the AADMK which was more or less isolated in this elections uh, until it firmed up an alliance with the DMDK. So we need to see how it works. The DMK's uh, campaign at the moment uh, is being anchored by MK Stalin who has been travelling across the state uh, holding constituency level public meetings. Uh, he has been assisted by Udayanidhi Stalin who is crisscrossing constituencies on an open jeep. Kalimoli Karnadi has also joined the campaign. But one striking uh, uh, you know, feature in the DMK front is that uh, the Congress national leaders including Rahul Gandhi have not campaigned enough in Tamil Nadu. At the moment Rahul Gandhi is going to address only one meeting uh, jointly with Stalin and beyond that uh, for some reason the Congress leaders have stayed away. But on the other hand in the NDA we see that uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and several union ministers have been making multiple visits uh, to Tamil Nadu. In fact, Narendra Modi has been visiting constituencies and holding meetings and roadshows in areas where he feels that the BJP uh, can make an impact. Uh, he has uh, come to Coimbatore, he has been in South Chennai, uh, he has moved to Velur, he has moved to different parts uh, where uh, you know uh, the uh, initial support base uh, that the party has could uh, be bumped up uh, by his presence. So we will see uh, during the course of the week how things move. Uh, I shall meet you in another video. Until then, this is D. Suresh Kumar signing off. Uh, thank you.